Uh, hey everyone, thanks for having me here. My name is Sanjay, and I am the uh, founder and CEO of Seva. So I just want to give kind of a quick snapshot into the company before we get into the content. Uh, we've been around for relatively new, we've been around for a little bit over a year. We got started in January of last year. Uh, we are a New York-based company. Uh, we are currently seven full-time members, mostly on the technical side, and we're growing. And uh, we recently raised just a little under two and a half million dollars in seed funding from Avalon Ventures, Studio VC, as well as Olivier Pomel, who is uh, CEO and founder of Datadog. Um, just a little bit on my background, so I've been in the data space for a little while. I was previously founder and CTO of a company called Pictella, which was a video ad management platform that was acquired by AOL a few years ago, and then I most recently served as a CTO at Simul Media, which is a data-oriented uh, ad tech company here in New York. So we are, so save a simple enterprise search for growing companies. And now this term enterprise search will probably mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but for us, you know, fundamentally it's a way for knowledge workers to uh, sort of take advantage of institutional knowledge that already exists within an organization. And we do that by giving people a super easy way to search across all the different applications you use at work. So for example, uh, you know, if you're working, you know, if, you're, if your company is standardized on G Suite and Box and Slack, for example, we will give all your employees just a single entry point into all of those applications so you can search uh, really, really quickly. So why, uh, you know, why is now a good time to be an enterprise search? So one of the big trends I think that we've all been seeing over the last few years is this sort of staggering growth in the number of applications that we have in the workplace, right? The stack has continued to grow, whether it's messaging, cloud storage, CRM, project management, task management, et cetera, the stack has really grown, and it's gonna to continue to grow for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, in so many ways, I think this is largely due to the fact that, you know, all of us as individuals within an organization, we have tremendous amount of buying power and decision-making power in the applications that uh, we want to use at work. So, for example, you know, if I'm a salesperson or a seller at a growing company and I see this amazing new piece of prospecting software, all I really have to do is sign up for a 30-day trial, swap my credit card, get my team on board, and all of a sudden, uh, my company's stack has just grown by one, right? Um, if you look at some of the macro level data out there, so this is something that came out um, just in February. Uh, if you're a large enterprise today, you could see anywhere uh, about, about 129 or so different applications as part of your stack, and that represents about 68% growth over the last four years. And even if you're a medium-sized enterprise, you still have about 73 apps as part of your stack, and that also has grown pretty substantially uh, over the last four years as well. And so I think, you know, having this level of autonomy and having this level of choice in the applications that we use uh, has made all of us very productive as individuals, but I think it's also had, uh, it's had its fair share of downsides. And I think that that is, that teams are now struggling with, you know, siloed data and, and knowledge fragmentation throughout the organization. My inspiration actually for starting this company came from the fact that as the teams that I started managing uh, started to get really, really big, it's kind of amazing to me that we spent, that our team was spending a lot of time just trying to find stuff. And I was just convinced that there's got to be a better way to do this, right? So we're a relatively new company. Um, you know, we're just getting out, of, we're just getting out, we're talking to customers now. Um, what we're learning is that the problem space kind of breaks down into three themes. Um, one is a discoverability problem, and that's just the sheer amount of time that people spend trying to find stuff that they need when they're trying to complete a task. On average, we spend about eight to ten hours a week just trying to find information and just trying to validate information. What's even worse is what happens when you can't find what you want, right? So if you can't find what you want, chances are you'll abandon your task, you'll bother your coworkers, uh, and in many cases, you'll just go ahead and recreate stuff that already exists within the enterprise. The second part, is, the second problem is kind of a synthesis problem, where as a knowledge worker, as a seller, as a product manager, as an engineer, chances are the thing that I care about, a customer, an initiative, a product, the data and the information that I need to do my job is most probably scattered across multiple different data silos, and there's no real easy way today 
to get at it without opening a bunch of new browser tabs and searching all over the place. And so this notion of a content-based source of truth is actually kind of lacking. And the third is uh, relatively new. So this is something that we're actually seeing a lot as we go out and talk to customers, which is general platform misuse. And what I mean by that is that we're seeing a lot of companies who have uh, invested a lot of time and money into messaging platforms, into cloud storage platforms, with the intent that they can uh, you know, sort of truly be content collaboration and discovery platforms. But in all honesty, and, and what we're seeing is they're not actually built to do that. Um, they're very, very specific solutions. So um, as we sort of, you know, uh, as we sort of get out there and we start to talk to customers, the thing we're focused on right now is trying to find where in the market this pain is particularly acute. Where is it hurting the most? And what we're finding is that, you know, this pain is most acute at, uh, within customer-facing teams or customer-oriented teams, uh, very specifically at growth stage companies. So these growth stage companies are companies that are, you know, they've just raised a Series A, Series B, uh, they're focused squarely on, on growing product, growing revenue, growing teams, not really focused that much on operationalizing and institutionalizing you know, information and knowledge. Very specifically within those organizations, we see this pain to be very acute with people in the customer orientation function. So sales, marketing, sales enablement, sales operations, who ultimately feel like they're being sort of left... Um, uh, left to dry by all of this growth, right? And so, you know, some of the quotes that we have up here on the screen are, are quotes from actual users of our product. Um, you'll see that, you know, in the first two cases, whether you're, you know, running a big, you know, nationally distributed sales team or you're running a big marketing team, you know, you're frustrated because your teams are spending so much time trying to find stuff. They're trying to recreate it. You don't feel like, you know, if you're in marketing, you're not feeling like you're, you're, your output is being validated because people actually can't just find it. Um, and then you also have, you know, the, the, the operations manager who's always looking for kind of ways to make people more productive. So, you know, we spend a lot of time, so this is sort of like the, the pain that we've been able to uncover in a very short amount of time. And we spend, you know, a lot of time amongst the seven of us thinking about, okay, what is the most meaningful product that we can build for this particular audience. And it really kind of boils down to five things, right? These are fast growing companies and don't have a lot of time, not a lot of money. Uh, they just need to go, go, go. And it really boils down to one, um, setup. So everybody wants a search product, but they don't want to do the work to maybe set up a traditional search product. So it had to be super simple. Um, number two, it had to be collaborative. So um, it wasn't going to be beneficial if our product just benefited one individual contributor within the organization. They're like, hey, we'd like to see this product actually benefit teams, cross-functional teams within the organization. Cost model had to be flexible. Don't throw any new pricing at me. Just let me buy things the way that I'm used to buying it. I'll pay some you know, monthly recurring fee on a per seat basis. Uh, and it's just got to be super simple. And then we put a lot of focus on design and usability because you know, people don't you know, companies don't want uh, people to have to learn new behaviors necessarily. They want search and discovery to be integrated into the way that people are already working. Um, and then obviously, you know, enterprise optimized. So we do index uh, corporate data. So we take that obviously very responsibly. Um, and, and uh, you know, companies obviously want to make sure that we've taken the necessary precautions to be able to do that. So now we'll take a look at a couple of quick screenshots uh, on the product, I should have probably done a demo. Um, but what you can see is our search results screen showing uh, a bunch of different results, so different file types, PDFs, uh, files from Google Drive, Box, Slack, uh, Gmail, et cetera. Um, four things that are important in our product. So one is uh, super simple to set up. So the only thing you need to get started with Seva is a Google for Work account. Once you have that, uh, you're off to the races. So, so one of the things we've done with search is kind of obfuscate the complexity of setting up a search platform and made it super simple. Um, number two is it's secure. So we don't actually introduce any new permissioning or any new security model. We take what the, uh, what the organization has already established and we just sort of piggyback off of it. It's rich, so we are indexing data. Uh, we are able to provide sort of rich full text search inside of PDFs inside of e email attachments, 
Excel spreadsheets and things like that. So we're not just searching sort of metadata and, and all that fun stuff. Um, and then one of the things that we've always been sort of very keen on is making sure that our product is available wherever it is that people are spending time. So it's available in app, available as a Chrome extension, soon to be mobile application, and also gonna be soon, uh, soon available right from within Slack. And then um, uh, last thing I wanna show you here is, so we talked a lot about search, but we also have the ability to uh, do some collaboration. We have a feature called Topics uh, in our product, and Topics are essentially an aggregation uh, of content regardless of where it is. So in this particular case, you know, we're looking at you know, white papers potentially that have been set up by the marketing team. In this case, you can see that there's files from a variety of different sources all in one place. So this sort of gets over that single source of truth problem by giving people one place to go. Um, it's collaborative, so you can share this with all of your teammates. Uh, and it also uh, is enabled with an alerting platform. So if anything changes about something that you care about, you'll automatically, automatically be notified. So I think I'm actually out of time. Um, thank you. Uh, just a quick plug, we are also growing and hiring. So if, if you like what you saw, please come see us afterwards. Is this, is this a keyword-based uh, search? It is. For right now, it is a keyword-based search, so we are using sort of frequency algorithms to determine relevancy at this point, but um, our strategy at the moment is to first to acquire sort of a wealth of data uh, and then sort of start to use different types of inputs for, you know, relevancy tuning and all that. But for now, it is, yes. Okay. And is this um, largely searching, so cloud apps, or it is, is there... Um, yep, it is only searching cloud apps. Okay. But then yep. presumably the next step is to start going into like a mix of like stuff that's on-prem, stuff that's in the cloud. Yeah, we are getting a lot of requests for custom data sources that people have that are both on-prem as well as in cloud. And, you know, I think we just have to be, we want to do it, um, but obviously have to be careful about where we spend our time and resources and, and all of that. I think the nice thing that we found is we're able to tackle about 90% of all of our use cases with the seven or eight integrations that we have at the moment now. Very good. There was a question somewhere. Hey, um, I'm curious about how you guys approach deduping assets in different formats and different applications, or you could have something, you have PDF and Google Drive, and yeah. then, I don't know, different format in Slack that someone shifted to someone. Yeah. Um, and then also, like, just version histories of, like, an updated um, rules of engagement or something like that. Yeah. So on the deduping front, so that's a good question. Right now, uh, we are doing it. Um, we basically look at sort of like unique checksums and identifiers on a file. So if, if there's multiple checksums for a single uh, document, we'll only show one. Uh, we are actually enhancing that capability to show multiple versions of the same document regardless of where it lives. And you'll be able to sort of choose the version that you want. Um, your second question was on... Versions of... Yeah, so, so on the versioning stuff, so... We, the way that we sort of look at versioning right now is basically modified time. So if anything is, you know, changed within a certain period of time, we'll consider it a new version. Um, there's different types of inputs that we want to put into the product. We just haven't really got to those at this point. Hey, uh, very interesting space. My company uses a tool called Highspot uh, mm -hmm. for customer-facing teams. Yeah. Which is a specific niche you said you were going after. How do you guys actually differentiate? So, yep, so awesome product and very familiar. So, one of the things with Highspot, um, or I should say, one of the things with our product that is unique is that we don't actually require you to create or recreate your content in a new platform. So, what we do is we allow you to connect, we sync all of your data in the background, and then you allow yourself to sort of grow into the product. I think with some of the other platforms that are out there, you have to sort of, there's this there's this big hill to climb in the beginning, which is to recreate all of your content in a new platform. The other thing that I sort of failed to mention is that for us, you know, as an early stage company, we're focused on where we can sort of develop our wedge first, but our goal is to not actually stay uh, within sort of like the sales arena. And actually even now, sort of like our enterprise customers are asking us to sort of expand past, past that. 
maybe just one last question for me. How does how does access work? You just connect with Okta or something? Uh, so you just connect with your Google Auth. So your Google for Work account, um, and you just use your typical sign in, uh, uh, single sign on authentication credentials you'd use for any of the other platforms. We don't introduce anything new. All right, very good. Thank Thanks. you very much. <laughs> Thank you.